Louisiana Beer Reviews, Southern Tears 2 Xmas. Another cutesy beer from a sort of cutesy company, which let's see if their beer can live up to their little snarky name. To its snarky name. Uh, they use four types of barley malt, two types of hops. They don't name what they are on their website, but they do add figs, orange peel, and different types of spices like cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, and ginger. It gets a good score on Beer Advocate. Bros haven't fooled with this. 93 on rape beer, 97 out of 100 for the style spiced ale. So that's very good. I've never tried it. Uh, I bought this at uh, Stein's Deli. <laughs> which has an enormous array of beers. They're kind of cutesy with some of their, I'll call it faux soup Nazi approach. You'd have to see what I mean by going over there. But anyhow, I don't care how cutesy they are or ugly they are to people. And their owner is notoriously mean to people, but I don't care because you can be mean to me every day, talk to me like a dog. If you have a great beer selection, I'll go along with it. Especially when your prices aren't too bad. Okay. I'll take the abuse for the beer. Ooh, it smells spicy already. It smells like something I'm gonna hate. I mean, admittedly, I don't like spice beers. I like fruit cake. I like spice bread. If I wanna eat fruit cake or spice bread, I'll eat fruit cake or spice bread. If I want to drink beer, I'll drink beer. Uh, but taking into account the fact that I don't particularly like spiced beers and that I haven't been too thrilled with Southern Tears beers so far, let's, I want to give this an unbiased review. And I, I really am, I'm, I mean, I'm kidding around this morning, all, but I really am going to try to give it a fair review. The sun is obscured by clouds, as King Floyd might have said, uh, back in 1972. You can see there wasn't much head. It died right out, that little off-white head. Uh, it's so humid out here, and it's still kind of chilly, about 56 degrees. It says it's going to get maybe 70 to 73 today. Well, what does this smell like? It smells like a bunch of spices. <laughs> Not that any of them are bad. Now, um, a lot of people were ripping on Shipyard's um, pumpkin beer. What was the name of that beer? I said it smelled like a Cost Plus World Market. And... Um, this pretty much does smell like that. I mean, go to Cost Plus World Market, and they got all those spice brooms and everything, and that's what this smells like. I mean, if you like smelling that, go for it. Um, nothing bad, but I didn't like the way that was positioned. Um, the flavor is the same way. It's nothing bad. It's just like brown bread crust with a bunch of spices added. The mouthfeel is um, medium. The finish is, as usual with most beers, tip, uh, typical characteristic, semi-dry. This beer is not too rich. It's um, pretty easy drinking here at 8, 10 in the morning. Um, you don't really pick up the 8% alcohol, and that's a bonus or a plus. Yeah, more of that orange peel is coming out. Mm -hmm. And that almost tastes like black pepper. Now, I was watching video reviews. I watched all the video reviews I could find for this beer. And most of the people were saying, oh, it's all right. 
a few people like um, Jay's beer reviews up there in the New York. He was saying, oh, oh I hate it. <laughs> I can't finish it. And it's not, I don't know why he was saying it, but a lot of times I've noticed he can't stomach a uh, certain beers. He might be sensitive to flavors, but uh, I don't think it's, I don't think this beer is anything like that, like something you couldn't stomach or it's too rich, but I mean, I would not want to drink this with any kind of food. I, I find that these flavored beers and a lot of those wheat beers that had that banana and clove character, that coriander character, they do not pair well with food because they like, they hurt the taste of the food, they interfere with the taste. So definitely do not pair this with any kind of food. Um, as a standalone holiday beer, or if you want to say gimmick beer, <coughs> good carbonation, that's another plus. But for that type of beer, it's fine. I mean, Merry Maker or uh, this or all that lining kugel stuff. To me, that's all like the same genre. It's just, I usually approach it as, oh, let me review this to get it over with. <laughs> I have a bunch of Coors Banquet beer in the fridge, and they had it on sale. That sale's over. They had it for $2.99 and six pack for the 12 ounce stubby bottles. Now it's $6.49. But I bought a whole case of that stuff. That is way better than this, okay? I mean, they could never brew a beer like Coors Banquet to save their life. So, what do they brew? Stuff like this, where you can dump in a whole lot of uh, flavors and mask any kind of problems you might have making a regular beer, a lager beer. But I mean, how would I rate this? For beer overall, it's it's okay. Mm. My first instinct was to say it's a C. It's fair. For beer overall, okay. It's fair. It's all right. I mean, would I buy something like this? Absolutely not. For a spice beer, okay, maybe it's an A. Maybe it's most excellent. For that genre, if you're into that, I mean, uh, some people liked Happy Days when Fonzie was, you know, jumping the sharks with the motorbike and uh, Mork from Orc was coming on the show. I mean, people like, uh, some people like all that kind of stuff. I don't. Happy Days was good when it was Happy Days, you know, the original show with with what it was supposed to be. And beer was beer was good when it was what it was supposed to be. But hey, that's the new world, the new world of fun and games. So in the new world of fun and games, this is fine. It's an it's a most excellent spice beer. So welcome to the circus. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna end this review by saying, y'all come on down to a typical southeastern Louisiana winter, an uncomfortable, humid chill. More reviews on the way.